You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Today's problem, golden letters, is a string handling problem. Though strings are really just character arrays, so it's still an array problem. But it's been asked in Apple, so it's got that going for it. With that being said, let's solve it together. Some of you have said that it's really hard to view the question, especially if you're watching on small screen, on a smartphone screen or something like that. So I've zoomed in the question for you all. You may now view the question in all its glory. Let's begin. The question is titled Golden Letters. You're given a string key that contains a list of golden letters. You are also given another string str. Find out how many characters in str are golden letters. The first string right here, that's our key string. And the second string is str. Let's take a closer look. Straight away, we can see that L, the first, let's move from left to right. So L, the first character in str is not present in key. Same with M and O, capital W is not present in key. Only small w is there. But here we can see small w, which is present in both. So that's one common character. Another small w that's similar to both, that's two. An x that's present in both str and key, that's three. Small y is not there in key. Z is there in both str and key, that's four. So our total count is four, which should be our result. As we can see, our sample output is four as well. So essentially the problem tells us to check whether a character in str is present in key as well. So have a look at the constraints as well. One less than or equal to key dot length less than or equal to 52. One less than or equal to str dot length less than or equal to 10,000. And key and str are made up of only upper and lower case alphabets. All right. That's why the first condition makes sense because in the worst case, our key can have every single lower case alphabet and every single upper case alphabet leading to a total of 52 without duplicates. Now I'll leave the screen open y'all. Have a look at it. Just absorb the question and we'll be back shortly. The clue I'm going to give you right here is that you're going to have to use a certain advanced data structure in order to solve this. The brute force approach. I don't like that word brute force because it makes it look like there's no thinking behind it, but actually it does require quite a bit of thinking. But the instinctive approach is that we run a loop through every character of str and inside that we're going to learn, uh, run another loop, a nested loop and check each character of key. The total number of iterations in this case will be four because that's the number of characters in key times 10 because that's the number of characters in str. That is 40 iterations. But we can do it much faster. So your goal is to figure out how. I'll repeat it. We're going to use a certain advanced data structure in order to do so. And in case you're new to this channel, this is the first or second video, and you're a budding programmer, you don't know much beyond arrays and stuff, then I'd suggest you skip straight to the end, to the solution part of it, because there's a good chance you may not know about this data structure. So welcome back, guys. In case you don't know about hash sets or hash maps, I'd suggest you click the link above me, the caption. It's a nice and quick and concise explanation about how they work. But just to give you a quick brief, in case our key was stored inside, let's say an array, in order to find element Z, we'd have to iterate through every single character and check whether it was Z or not. First W, then X, then Y, then capital Z. Hash sets on the other hand, or hash maps, what they do is they have a constant lookup time. You don't have to iterate through every single element, W, then X, then Y, then Z. Instead, it passes it through a function and you're going to get the position right away. And in case it's not present in the hash set, then it'll directly return false. So as you can see right here, we're using hash sets. Now we've used hash maps a lot in previous problems. And if you use hash maps to solve this problem, good on you. It still gets done really quick. The only thing is hash maps have an extra column we don't need in this problem. It has key value pairs. Hash maps have keys and values. And you'll notice in this problem, we don't need the value column. All we need to do is check whether each element in string, say in string str, say L, is present inside the hash map or hash set. 
which is why we only need a single column. That's key. We don't need the value attribute that's associated with it, which is why hash sets will suffice. But hash maps are also a good way of solving it. So first, we iterate through our string. We check L. L is not present inside our hash set, so our result remains zero. It's the same thing with M, N, O, and capital W. The moment we hit small w, our hash set tells us that it's present here, and our result gets increased by one. Same thing with the next small w. Our result is now two. When we hit X, our hash set will return true. Yes, X is present in the hash set, which is why our result will again increase by one. Now, small y is not present in our hash set, but capital Z is, which is why our result increases again, and four is returned as our output. Now, let's have a look at the code. The algorithm for the problem is, first we create the hash set, which in this case will take four iterations. Then we iterate through the string and check whether each character is present in the hash set. If it is, then we increase result by one. If it's not, we just ignore it. This will take 10 iterations. So the total number of iterations here is 10 plus four, which is 14, which is a far cry better than the 40 iterations taken by the nested for loop approach. Now let's go into the coding bit of it. And this right here is the code. Initially, our result is going to be zero. We're going to create a hash set called set here, which stores characters as its key. What this for loop does is populate the hash set with every single character inside key. And this for loop finally checks if each character inside str is present inside the set. If it is, we simply increment our result. If it's not, we just ignore it. All we do is return our result. Let's compile and test. Sample test case is passed. Let's hope the submission test works. And it's been accepted for every single input. So guys, that's the solution. If you liked it, make sure to hit the golden trio, like, subscribe, bell icon. And if you've got any queries or any suggestions, make sure to leave your comments down below. It helps everybody involved. It's been Vivek Kalur, guys. I hope you like the solution and I'll see you next time.